Welcome to our next little tutorial series. Timeline signals. What are timeline signals? Well, they can be compared to the well-known animation events and are used to trigger changes in the scene when the timeline passes given points of time. During the tutorial, we'll change the following cutscene into that without writing any line of code. If you want to examine the Unity project quietly, you can download it by clicking on the link in the description below for a dollar free patronage. Before we start, I want to say thanks to our patrons who help us to make these tutorials and our game Cordex possible. A special thanks goes to Simon Zineda, David Heinzel, Erich Gangl, Melina Brunner, Robert Hartl, Reinhard Bauer and Maximilian Heinle. If you like our tutorials, then please support us on Patreon as well. Now let's jump into the video. The architecture of timeline signals. Before we continue with the practical example, I want you to understand the architecture of timeline signals. It's important to know the different components because with that knowledge, you're able to organize your project correctly. Okay, a signal consists of three parts. A signal emitter, a signal asset and a signal receiver. A signal emitter is placed on the timeline as a marker and is assigned with a signal asset. As the name indicates, a signal asset is a project-wide object. You can use the same signal asset in different timelines at the same time. A signal asset stores absolutely no data and only acts as a link between an emitter and a receiver. A signal receiver is a component which you can attach to an object of the timeline. We will see the possibilities and limitations in a second. So-called reactions, or actually events, are bound to the according signal asset. When the timeline cursor passes a signal emitter, which references a specific signal asset, the receivers of the timeline, which have reactions bound to that one signal asset, are invoked. This allows you to bind multiple signal assets to one receiver in order to invoke only a selection of reactions. Signal emitters on timelines. The goal of this tutorial is to trigger a physically based explosion somewhere during the timeline. For that, I've prepared a little script attached to this explosion object. In play mode, you can trigger it manually with the space button. Now, this explosion event should be triggered by the timeline. Exit play mode, select the cutscene and lock the timeline. In the top right of the left panel, you can hide or unhide the timeline markers. Right click somewhere in the middle and select add signal emitter. Yet you don't have any signal asset. Create one by clicking on the create signal button and store it into your project. Lastly, you need to add a receiver with the add signal receiver button. The receiver has been added to the object containing the timeline. The cool thing is that you can directly edit the receiver in the inspector of the emitter. So you don't need to constantly search for the object in the scene. A first reaction has been created already, with the receiver object assigned. In fact, you can drag in any object from the scene into this field. And that's exactly what we do now. Grab the explosion object from the scene and drag it into the field. Fold out the methods of the explosion script and select Explode. Make sure that the play on awake is enabled on the playable director and hit play. Awesome! The physics already works. Before we continue, I want to explain some properties of the signal emitters. The first is called retroactive and, if enabled, means that the signal is emitted even though the playback of the timeline starts somewhere after the event. Here's an example. Retroactive is disabled and we set the initial time of the playable director to something after the emitter. When we hit play, nothing happens. But when we enable the property and hit play again, the explosion is invoked immediately. Good. Set the initial time back to zero and head to the next property, emit once. This means when the timeline is in loop mode and the property is enabled, the signal is only invoked in the first round. Signal emitters on ordinary tracks. You're not only allowed to add signals to the timeline, but to any track as well. The only limitation is that the track accepts a binding. You can't add signals to a control track, for example, but on the camera animation track, 
that is bound to an animator, you can. So add a signal, select explosion for the emitted signal and add a signal receiver. When you double click the grayed out field, you will be forwarded to the game object which has the receiver attached. This time the receiver was added to the bound object of the track, the Cinemachine virtual camera. The object also has an impulse source attached, which we want to use to let the camera shake when the blast of the explosion reaches the camera. In the drop down of the reaction, select Cinemachine impulse source and generate impulse. Hit play. The explosion looks much more powerful than before. Signal emitters on signal tracks. The Unity development team also added a signal track to the selection of timeline tracks. This is useful when the object where the receiver is added isn't bound to any other track in the timeline. This time we want to play a particle system at the beginning of the explosion. Drag the particle system into the signal track and choose create signal receiver on particle system. A signal receiver component has been added automatically to the particle system. Create another signal emitter, select explosion again, add a reaction and choose particle system play. Start the scene and enjoy the little fireworks. To make the cutscene even more immersive, you could add an audio track, drag in the explosion acting as the audio source and play an explosion audio clip. Normally, an explosion emits some sort of light. Create an animation track, drag in the explosion light, hit the record button and animate the intensity property. You can fine tune the animation with the curves. Additionally, we should enable the light only during the explosion. For that, Add an activation track and drag in the lights once again. Add a clip to the track and adjust its position and size. Well done! This looks awesome already! You just mastered the use of Unity's default timeline signals. In the next video, I'm showing you how to implement your own sort of timeline markers. Stay tuned! Thank you very much for watching and see you next time! Don't forget to give us a like Subscribe to our newsletter, support us on Patreon and subscribe to our channel. Have a nice day, it's your sensei.